Hi, this is Shubham from Movie Studio, and today in this podcast, we are going to discuss about Section 195 of Income Tax Act 1961. This section is related to a taxability for a TDS for an NRI, that is non-resident individual. Over here in this podcast, we are going to discuss what is this provision is all about: eligibility, return, documentation, and bottom line. But before starting the podcast, if you want to read the full article about this, then the link of article is provided in description. Also, if you want to watch a quick summary video of less than 90 seconds then subscribe to our youtube channel monist view now let's start the non resident indians nri invest in india and earn returns on their income also nri might have a source of income from india in such cases when a payment is made to nri a tds that is tax deducted at source is done for the purpose of a taxability this deduction is specified under section 195 of income tax act 1961 over here we will discuss everything related to section 195 now let's discuss what is the provision this section 195 section 195 of income tax 1961 states that rules for the tax deduction for nri for income arising in india payment of the income is subjected to tds at a specific rate depending on the type of a income earned tds is however deducted provided that such income is taxable in india for instance say an nri invest in a mutual fund in india when the nri redeems the fund and if a return is earned the mutual fund company would deduct a tds on the redemption amount and then credit amount to nri's bank account now the first and foremost question is who is nri so the an individual is called as nri if he doesn't fulfill following two condition first he stay in india is for 182 days or more in the last financial year second he stay in india is for 60 days in a last financial year and 365 days or more in the four years immediately before the last financial year then the person is considered as a resident now let's take an example and understand who is nri and what would be the tax implication suppose mr x is has visited india in this current year for less than 182 days and stays also if his stay is less than 60 days or in total less than 365 days for last 4 years then he is a nri and as far as his investments is concerned if he had invested rupees 1 lakh in a mutual fund then mutual fund will deduct a tds on returns available on that 1 lakh and proceed will be credited to his bank account now let discuss what are the entities eligible for deduction of a tds tds deduction from nri income would be done by the following types of entities. it is if the pay and income for nri these include resident individual hindu undivided family other nri partnership firm foreign companies jurisdiction individual individual that are exempt because of a tax exempted income in india like agriculture so to conclude every individual is eligible to deduct a tax including the other nri as well so the government making sure that there is a no leakage of taxes from nri now let's discuss the key component while deducting tds on nri income the first component is a tan number a tan is a tax deduction account number if you are liable for a tds then this is must as a nri this number capture the tds deduction that you do you can get a tan number if you fill up and submit a form 49b online or offline the second component is a tds should be submitted within the required timeline just deducting a tds is not enough you need to submit a tds to the government submit the tds through chalans or a tds form within 7th of a following month for example if a tds is made in august then it has to submit it to government before the 7th september third key component is a filing of tds return tds this return has to be filed quarterly in the form 27q for each quarter the due date is the last day of the next month for example for the first quarter that is april may june the deadline for tds return is 31st july for july august september deadline is 31st october for october november december deadline is 31st january and for last quarter january february march deadline is a 31st may over here over here since it is a last quarter year end 
event hence one month additional timeline is given the fourth factor is a tds certificate after filing is done you have to issue a tds certificate to nri showing that the details of a tds is deducted the tds certificate is issued in form 16a within 15 days of filing a quarterly tds return the last component over here is a salary and dividend income are exempt section 195 specifically excludes tds deduction on salary and dividend payments to nri tds on salary is generally undertaken under section 192 of income tax act on the other hand dividend income is taxed in the hands of nri at 20% plus surcharge hence these two are exempt from section 195 now let's discuss nil deduction certificates nri can avoid tds deduction if it avail a nil deduction certificate however this certificate is allowed only in the following criteria the first one is when nri not default in any type of a interest tax or gratuity tax payments the second one is when nri is running a business in india continuously for five years and the value of a fixed assets of a business is not more than rupees 50 lakhs the third one is the assessee has assessed the tax and has filed income tax returns regularly and the fourth one is nri is not facing any penalty under section 271 under the four circumstances if satisfied then nri can be given a nil deduction certificate which effectively states that any income which arise in india for nri will be a non deduction now let us discuss what are the non compliance of a tds rules if tds is not deducted at a specified rate and there will be a shortfall a penalty would be levy and this penalty would be a shortfall between a tds deducted and tds deductible if a tds is deducted but not deposited to the government then also penalty will be levy this penalty equals to a tds amount if a tds has been deducted but not submitted to the government then the interest rate is 1.5 percent per month or a part if there is a no payment of tds then the expenses relating to this tds would be disallowed these are four provisions available for non-compliance of a tds generally it doesn't affect the nri it affects the party who has to do a tds now let's discuss what is the bottom line over here if you are liable to pay any form of a payment to an nri know the tds implication tds is applicable as specified in the provision of section 195 income tax 1961 deduct the specified tds and also deposit it with the government within the due date to about penalties consult your ca or tax advisor for your details on tds and its nuances if you want to read the full article about this the link of article is provided in description also if you want to watch a quick summary video of less than 90 seconds then subscribe to our youtube channel monist view thank you guys for joining with us over here shubham from monist view signing off